I'm Walter Crocker, and I have two hats today. I'm chair of this cultural awareness celebration. And the other hat is I am director of this campus, so I'm also your host, so welcome. I'm gonna ask the president of our student government board here at the Liston campus to welcome you as well. Michael. Good morning. Well, I want to welcome everybody to the Liston campus. It has been an honor for the past two years to serve you guys as the student body president. And I want to welcome President Hughes to our first multicultural event, our honorees. I now declare the eighth annual CCRI Awareness Celebration officially open. If you can all rise, remove your covers, your hats. We're going to have our national anthem sung by the three tenors. your program on the inside left page. It's a list of all the people that put this place together and put this celebration together. And I would ask you to take a look at that list. There are faculty, there are staff, there are students, and they really worked very, very well. They worked extremely hard this year. This is our eighth year we've been doing this here at the Liston campus. They had to work extremely hard because early in the planning, I was diagnosed with bladder cancer and I had to have treatments. And so they really carried us right through this whole event. And I want you to let these people on the planning committee know. And those that are here, please stand up and let us thank you. There are approximately 101 different countries represented at CCRI, which is amazing. I don't even think Harvard can say that. And, and so here we are. We have 1,346 international students enrolled in our four 
our four campuses. And that's amazing. We're going to hear from four of those students today. One of the reasons we bring you together and talk about our international experiences is that our students learn an awful lot from other students from other lands. And one of the things we like to do is talk about sharing cross-cultural kinds of events. And so I'd like to just lead you to this stop right now and tell you that one of our students from Bogota, Colombia last year told us all about a cultural difference in Colombia, South America, that they don't usually clap their hands when they show appreciation to a speaker or to an entertainer. What they do is they take their finger and their thumb together and they do this. Now, you can make it louder if you moisten your thumb. But I'd like you to stand up for a second, please, and let's, let's make some Colombian noise. Let's hear it, let's hear it. That's good. Now, not bad. So, stay, stay, stay standing, keep your fingers ready, but I'd like you to give a Colombian welcome to our president of CCRI, Dr. Megan Hughes. Thanks, Walter. Yeah, Walter would be right. That is the very first time I've been greeted this way. Uh, I think I may try to implement it tonight at my dinner table when one of my two children starts talking off over the other. Uh, big, big thanks to the three tenors. Uh, that was an incredibly moving rendition. Uh, and I said to them as I was walking on the stage, I have a 13-year-old uh, boy who sings like a bird. And as far as I can tell, his voice changed yesterday, and he is horrified. Um, his older sister is not helping with that horror, and I really appreciate the coaching you gave me that I will be back to that dinner table tonight, which essentially is just keep singing. So just thank you so much for kicking off the day. Uh, to Michael, I have so enjoyed our time and the time to talk to you last week in my office. So impressed with um, your leadership here at the college and um, really excited to see what comes next for you uh, and expect to have you back in my office sharing that with me. Also, um, more Rhode Island eating establishment pieces of advice. Uh, and then to the committee, um, Walter had shared with me just all the work that you put in um, to pull this off. Uh, I, I am learning the politics of communication in this role, and so bear with me when I say this. Uh, I love all four campuses equally. I'm looking at Robin Green from Newport. Uh, however, I live in Providence. Uh, my oldest child is a classical graduate. Many, many, many of my year up graduates are this campus uh, students. So uh, I hope it's politically appropriate for me to say that this campus has a very, very, very special place in my heart. And I'm so happy to be here. Right, this is good. I can figure that out. Uh, and so now I need to talk about uh, our friend, Mr. Crocker. Uh, I, I first sat down with Walter before I was president, and I think we closed the campus down at Warwick. So anyone who's been in a conversation with Walter knows how that goes. Uh, I left thinking that if I could just uh, clone him and put him across all four campuses, and then perhaps, as I asked his wife this morning, eat whatever it is he eats for breakfast every morning, uh, CCRI really would have no challenges at all. So uh, the, the, I think he, before I went to sleep that night, he wrote me an email, uh, very graciously thanking me for my time, and then he said, so you talked at length, Megan, about all the au pairs from around the world that have helped uh, sort of grow your family. I was struck by the fact that you had multiple South African au pairs. So it seems very fitting that you'd be writing me a check so that the South African flag can go up in the auditorium. <laughs> uh, we're looking for some additional support in advancement. So I'm thinking maybe if he's got some extra time, you can come help us figure that out. Uh, so with that, uh, I just want to, I guess one final observation before I read my prepared remarks. Uh, I met many students when I came in today. Um, many of these students uh, 
are, are speaking English extremely well uh, and with an accent because they have arrived from somewhere else. Uh, I believe passionately that this country is a great country and will only remain a great country uh, based on how we welcome our immigrants, based on how we provide education and professional opportunity to them. So it feels like a great privilege to be with you all today to, to celebrate uh, the role that immigrants play in this country and must continue to play. Okay, so now I also am working with glasses where I can either read or look at you. Um, we'll see, we'll just see how this goes. Uh, so, great pleasure for me to participate in Cultural Awareness Day at the campus that consistently has the most cultural diversity of any college or university in Rhode Island. That's right, this spring, CCRI enrolls 5,710 students who identify as a minority, that's 38% of our total enrollment, and it is truly something to celebrate. This academic year, CCRI has 1,346 international students, and as Walter said, from 101 countries, and frankly, who cares about Harvard? There are not many institutions of higher education that can say that. You can take a look at the map of the world here and see where they come from. If we were giving a trophy to the country with the largest number of students here, it would be the Dominican Republic with 371 students enrolled at CCRI. That deserves some applause. This, the, theme, the theme selected for, for today's event, we are all in this together, is just awesome. And in fact, as I'm thinking about what I want to see across our four campuses increasingly is words just like that. You know, it, it is how we will move this college forward. It is how we will serve our students, is by truly believing that we're all in this together. Uh, all of us, from whatever culture or ethnic group we belong to, we need to work together, we need to get along with one another, and we need to welcome and honor each other. That's what we're doing today. I add my congratulations to Yamil Cambrero, fellow classical grad, our CCRI student who came up with the theme of this year's celebration. We have had students from Iceland, Uganda, Bangladesh, Nepal, and many other countries join the CCRI family. When we talk about a diversity, we have so many things to be proud of. We have more than 630 military veterans enrolled, many of whom have served in Iraq and Afghanistan, there are 101 Native Americans enrolled here. They are Narragansetts, Wampanoags, Nipmucks, Mohegans, Pequots, and others. A new gender equity initiative established at CCRI is a resource hub for issues surrounding sexuality and gender and is designed to create safe spaces for all students here. I believe passionately in that and I'm really proud of the work that's happening at this campus and at our sister campuses. When I look at today's program, I am so proud. Thank you to the committee who composed today's event, celebrating CCRI's rich cultural heritage. And thank you so much for coming, for the wonderful Colombian applause, and I'm really looking forward to the program. We have in the audience 15 students who have some international interests who are also students at the Lincoln campus and they form an international club. And they spent their spring break and a few days before that doing public service in the country of Haiti. They're doing car washes and bake sales and finding enough money so they can fly to Haiti and help the Haitians clean up from all of these natural disasters that they've been bumping into. I'd like at this time for the people in the International Club at the Flanagan Campus to please stand and I will let them. One of our co-advisors of that International Club is here and he's going to come down and tell you briefly what they did when they went to Haiti. They didn't go as tourists. Please, Gerard.
I got a message from Walter, and he said, keep it brief. So Walter, the 40 pages I prepared are down to 20. <laughs> I'm only kidding, of course. A little bit of history, and then a little bit of what we did in Haiti. Better than 10 years ago, a woman who graduated from CCRI returned to where it all started. She had earned a master's degree from Northeastern University and was nationally certified as a clinical psychologist where she spent many years in the practice. She believed that classroom education flourishes best when accompanied by national and international travel. This began the rebirth of the International Club. Of course, I'm speaking of Monica Lee. Over the years, we've been asked some interesting questions such as, what is educational about visiting Paris? And I'd normally respond by saying, perhaps two days at the Louvre, coming face to face with the Mona Lisa. It doesn't matter where you stand in that room, she's looking directly at you. <clears throat> Maybe another day in the relatively new African Museum. Outstanding place to visit and to learn. And of course, one day in the Museum of Renaissance Art <clears throat> and perhaps a trip to Notre Dame. Maybe a discovering of flying buttresses and the beginning of Gothic architecture. There is so much to learn through travel. Today we are asked, why a trip to Haiti? Short answer, to have a life-changing experience. To witness extreme poverty, homelessness, living without running water, children having very little to eat, and the list goes on. Most importantly, to never again find anything to complain about. There is so much more to learn about life than what is taught in a classroom. However, without the classroom, one would not absorb the teachings of life. I wish to end by praising the 15 members of the International Club who worked nonstop for six days in 95 degree weather. They carried sand, they carried stone, they carried cement as we built a stairwell in a two-story building. Everybody had aching muscles after those exercises for a few days. For relaxation, we visited villages where these 15 students taught children how to color, how to play ball. The students experience children clinging to them and not wanting us to leave, and then looking forward to our next trip to their village. Our students helped build pleasant memories for young children. And they were rewarded with many hugs and tears as we left. I will always remember and be extremely proud of how dedicated and hardworking each member of the International Club was. The CCRI initials are now embedded in the concrete staircase they helped to build. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ron Lisa. And thank you to Monica Lee.
for showing the way for this international club and service to humanity. A little earlier, I had made a reference to my medical problem. And I neglected to say that during the various kinds of procedures I had to go through for this cancer, I met an awful lot of CCRI graduates in the health professions. I made a lot of new friends, and I got impressed even more with the professionalism that they demonstrated, both in medical imaging, in nursing, and in other kinds of, I'll say, medical support systems. And that's kind of a tribute to CCRI. I'm very, very pleased with that. One other thing I'd like to mention is through all of this stuff that I had to go through, my wife was probably my best friend in this whole thing. She helped with the medication. She helped drive me to and from the hospital. She helped drive me to and from various medical offices, etc. And sometimes you have a tendency to forget that kind of stuff. But not today. I'm going to have you witness that I didn't forget. Aww. Harry, please stand. Presently, have a life partner, and many of you college students don't, but you're looking for them, I'm sure. <laughs> Make sure you get one like I have, because you will be rewarded for the rest of your life. My best friend, Terry Crocker. who, as you have found out, is the author of the theme for this year's celebration. Yamo came up at one of the planning meetings and said, you know, we're all in this together. We gotta work together and we gotta be nice to each other and to be tolerant. Hey, that says it all. But Yamo is gonna start to tell you about his country, but he's also going to be the MC to introduce his three colleagues. Yamo? Good morning, everyone. Um, so before I begin the speech, I prepared, if you see me everywhere in this program for Cultural Awareness Day, it's because Dr. Crocker has been there emphasizing I put this, emphasizing the fact that it's a way to network, branch out, and put yourself out there. Um, I'm going to thank him for giving me quite a few roles in this. It helped me learn for next year. And as long as I'm here, I'm going to be on this committee working on this. So thank you. And, um, as you've seen on the video, I have family in Ecuador. My mother is Colombian, my father is Dominican. So as a product of Colombia and Dominican Republic, my life has been a blend of cultures. And because of this blend, I've come to appreciate different cultures. And I've grown to have a love for several languages. I'm actually trilingual. And it's helped me love and understand more cultures. From the start of my childhood, my parents have made learning languages and cultures a must for me. And Although they both left their mark on me, there is a gray area as to which half of me, Colombian or Dominican, I identify with most. These three students have come from different cultures, and it's my pleasure to introduce them, starting with Fani. We have another job for President of CCRI, and she is to thank each speaker by giving them a gift. And the gift will be a new American dictionary to help them with their new language and their new country. And she has written on the flyleaf a personal message for them. So this is a keepsake item. And so Megan, would you please hand 
Yamo his. <coughs> International Awareness Day. My name is Fani and I'm from Bulgaria and today I'm here to represent my home country. Bulgaria is one of the oldest countries in Europe that has not changed its name since it was established at 681st AD. Bulgaria is located in Eastern Europe on the Balkan Peninsula. It is bordered with five other countries and the Black Sea on the east. On the west, Bulgaria borders with Serbia and Macedonia. On the northern border is Romania, on which 80% of the border rests on the Great Danube River. On the southern border is Greece and Turkey. Due to its geographical location, some refer to Bulgaria as a crossroad between Asia and Europe. Bulgaria, Bulgaria's flag has three equally sized horizontal bands. The three-card three flag symbolizes the love, the peace, and the freedom with the light, the youth and the beauty of the nature with the green band, and the red band represents the blood of the heroes that fought for the country. The capital of Bulgaria, Sofia, is located on the west, and it was found over 7,000 years ago, which makes it the second oldest city in Europe. Bulgaria comes third for the list of countries with the most valuable archaeological sites from the Greeks and the Romans discovered on its territory. Most of these sites are found in the second biggest city called Plovdiv, also known from the history as Philippopolis, which means the city of Philip Macedonian. Recently Plovdiv was elected for the European capital of the culture by UNESCO. Bulgaria is also a member of both NATO and the European Union. The Bulgarian nation is proud with the 1,500 years of history and traditions. For, ist, for instance, the Kyrillic alphabet was invented in the 9th century AD by none other than, two, than the two most famous Bulgarian monks ever to have lived, Cyril and Methodius, and it's used by over 250,000 people in Europe and Asia. Another example is that the first computer in the world was created by a Bulgarian. Uh, in, 1942, John Atanasov, a scientist from of Bulgarian descent, together with Clifford Berry, an American inventor, designed and developed the first electronic or digital computing device. Another interesting fact about Bulgaria is that a traditional Bulgarian folk song has been flying around in open space together with Bach's and Mozart's greatest works since 1977 when the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 probes left the Earth. Bulgaria's land is extremely beautiful and naturally diverse. For example, there are over 40 mountains spanning four mountain ranges, including the Rio Rudopi range, which covers the whole southwest of the Bulgarian territory and extends to Greece and Macedonia. Within this range are over 4,500 caves littered with waterfalls. Another example of Bulgaria's beauty and natural diversity is the Black Sea which is popular with the golden beaches that gather people from all over the world. <clears throat> in one of the cities that stands on the Black Sea, Varna, was found the world's oldest treasure, which, uh, which is made by the Trajans. Also, the great <coughs> valleys that scatter under the mountains give production to the world-class delicious wines, as well, as well as a lot of roses. Bulgarian Rose Valley provides more than 80% of the world's rose oil, which is mainly used to make the world's most expensive perfumes. In addition, the Bulgarian yogurt is the best in the world. <laughs> this, is due, <laughs> this is due to a special bacteria, Lactobacillus bulgaricus, that can be found only on Bulgarian land. A very popular tradition that Bulgarians keep is every year on March 1st, the nation exchange Martinitsas. Essentially, these are small pieces of adornment made of red and white thread that symbolizes the good health and the happiness. People take them off when they see the first blossoming tree of the spring. Another big holiday is March 3rd when the nation celebrates the Independence Day from the slavery of the Ottoman Empire for over 500 years. With the help of Russia and the great Bulgarian soldiers that fought for the freedom of the country. Every year on that day, people gather on the hill where the war started 
and they sang songs and bring flowers in honor to the people who died to save the country. There is so much to say and see in such a little piece of heaven. So put your skinny jeans on, come feel the Bulgarian traditions, taste the wine, and smell the roses. Our next student is Unid from Haiti. Morning, everyone. Bonjour. Ça passe na poule. It's a pity. Yeah, my name is Unid, and it's a pleasure for me today to introduce you um my motherland. And my gratitude goes also to the team, Phil, that I go. <laughs> and uh, many of us, as immigrants, have a place. A place that shows us the first love and affections, where we have learned as a baby how to make our first steps. A place that we all love dearly, that we miss deeply, and that place is our motherland. In that perspective, it's an honor for me today to introduce you my beautiful motherland, which is Haiti, the second worldly country. Haiti was discovered on the 5th December 1492 when the European navigator Christophe Columbus happened upon a large island called Hispaniola, a name that means mountainous country. It's derived from the language of the Taino Indians who inhabited the island before the European colonization and was the first island in the New World in the region of the Western Atlantic Ocean settled by the Spanish that later came to be known as the Caribbean. <coughs> then, by the years of 1788, after France has forced Spain to cede the island, the colony had come, become the jewelry of entires, the richest colony, Santo Domingo, and the world, France's wealthiest overseas colony, largely because of its production of sugar, coffee, molasses, indigo, and cotton generated by an enslaved labor force. Among those slaves emerged some of the greatest black military men in history, including to Louverture, Jean-Jacques de Saline, who abolished slavery and expanded the neighbor speaking Spanish colony, Saint Domingue, present today Dominican Republic, at the second hand. A slave, they led the Vetures on November 1803, which is the Battle of Vetures, and in January, they inaugurated and declared the nation independent, renamed in Haiti as the first sovereign black republic in the Western Hemisphere and became himself the first president of this nation. Resident attached tremendous importance to this event, event that made Haiti the first independently free black nation in the world and only the second nation after the United States to win its independence from the European power. Haiti is covered 20,750 squares. It's located in the subtricks on the western third of Hispaniola, the second largest island in the Caribbean, which it shares with the Spanish-speaking Dominican Republic. The neighboring island is including Cuba, Jamaica, and Puerto Rico. The island is also located with the Caribbean hurricane belt. It is the most densely populated country in the world. And again, a majority of the population is, is being killed, and 2,000 of people were killed January 2010, when an earthquake struck Porto Point, which is the capital, and other regions in the country, causing damage up to $7.8 billion, which is also due to a high unemployment rate. Most Asian are descendants of African slaves who came to the island beginning the 
17th, 16th centuries. A small portion of Haiti people, 5% of mixed heritage of white known as Mulat. A large number of Haitians live in Florida, New York, Boston, etc. According to the 1987 Constitution, the official language of Haiti is Haitian Creole, but Creole is the language of daily conversation. An estimate 15% of the population speak fluently French, but in recent decades, United States have helped English replace French almost as the second language in many sectors of the population. Haitians enjoy dancing and will often dance whenever they hear catchy tune music and dancing or integral to everyday Asians' life. This include music performed during the three carnival festival days, dance Latino, which we have with the Asian, the world member dancer, champion, Emmanuel Pierre Antoine, the, and the former president, um, Matelli, President Matelli, and Wyclef Jean also, a Asian, who was almost running for Asian presidency. AT its economy is based on agriculture, which employs about two thirds of the workforce. The currency is called Asian good, which is you can make some copies after. <laughs> we, today we're gonna need, we will need five, 60 goods for $1, and which is, um, totally different in my younger age. I, I, want, I needed only $5 to have $1. Haiti national holidays include New Year's, which is also independent days that the celebrate with a good yummy soup with crash, meat, and cabbage, and pasta. Finally, Haiti is known not only for its rebellion history, for its tribulation, pain, and sorrows, for its irresistible tropical beaches, widely frequented, such as Wangabe Beach, Moulin Sumer Beach, Waube Beach, and Labadi Beach, but also for its incredible people. Asians are warm, friendly, and generous. The tradition of hospitality is how they great treat guests and go out of their ways to help strangers find and adjust or something else they need. And their mangoes is so delicious. If you, whenever you eat um, Asian mangoes, you won't get away of it. <laughs> Asians are very proud of their culture and their history. The story of the past Asian heroes are not forgetting by today's youth and also give them hope for a better future. Besides, Asians celebrate life with joy, life, and dancing, even after the terrible earthquake that killed over 3,100 of them, they find courage to celebrate life. Asians strongly believe in the education and the balance of freedom between working and dancing. So asking an Asian to not dance is most likely put them next to their grave. <laughs> So to give Asian jobs and let them dance and education, so let them enjoy dance and thank you. And last but not least, we have Samantha coming up. Let me start by saying thank you to the committee for having me up here. It was kind of a shock receiving the email that I was accepted, to be honest. <laughs> my name is Samantha Dieter, and my first exposure to CCR I was to the GED program. Had it not been for the GED program, I wouldn't be here. And furthermore, I would not be here to speak to you about my tribe, the Apache Nation. I can guarantee you, though, that before I stated this, you thought I was just white. That's okay. I get that a lot. I really do. <laughs> But that is not why I'm here before you today. As a white native, I can tell you it is a blessing to identify as both. Although my heritage car I carry harbors both two warring communities, both the past and the present, it is amazing how carrying both made me aware of how differently they treat and view each other. 
It also gave me more of a realization on how I treated others and made me more cautious. It made me also realize that all of us have something, and historically we all have a story with a bumpy, sometimes even violent past. But all that is usually stemmed from seeking peace and freedom. My people, both the white and the native, sought for peace. Unfortunately though, just like everything else in that time, that word peace was elusive and interpretive at best. It was then, but it should not be now. So I say with a warm heart and a happy word, as someone who walks the path of both, I will strive for peace between the cultures. I strive to understand that as a people we need unity, but I also do not think that this will be achieved overnight. Also, as I stand here today with my fellow college students, I realize that maybe that would be true. It may not be overnight, but it will be done, and we can do this, and like Yamil said, we are all in this together. So, if you all will please join me in the Apache prayer provided, I would like you to follow me in this prayer for peace. May the sun bring you energy by day. May the moon softly restore you at night. May the rain wash away your worries. May the breeze blow new strength into your being. And may you walk gently through the world and know its beauty all the days of your life. And thank you very much for having me today, everyone. We're going to ask the three tenants to come back right now. You're going to enjoy this one. It's a little edgy, but it's about coming to America and adjusting, sometimes the hard way, sometimes the easy way. Gentlemen. students here at CCRI, they're often talking to me about how much you, staff, faculty, and fellow students, not from international quarters, have done for them. They are so happy with the way they have been received by Rhode Islanders and folks from CCRI that 
we've decided to let them thank you with a song. So I'm going to ask Sharon Mazik to come up and sing a song for all faculty and staff and fellow students who have helped our international students with language, with how to register, where various rooms are, which professors they ought to stay away from, and all that kind of thing. <laughs> so Sharon is going to sing a song that really puts into words what we thank these CCRI people for. Sharon and I go back maybe 30, 35 years. We worked together around college. She was a, tri a trio program advisor. I was a dean. And uh, I discovered that she had a beautiful, beautiful singing voice and she was willing to share it. And so I try and bring her back whenever I can. And we're in for a treat as she thanks CCRI staff, faculty, and fellow students on behalf of our international students. Sharon? Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am so honored to be a part of this day. And I want to add some other people to the list of people that you, can, you owe a, a, some a debt of gratitude and thanks to. Yes, the Community College of Rhode Island faculty, staff, the students, and also the members of your families, some who are in America, some who are still in your home countries, some who are living, some who have passed on to a greater place. So as you think of, of, of your heart of gratitude, I want you all to remember that so many people have contributed to your life as it exists today. To never have sunlight on your face. You were content to let me shine, cause that's your way. You always walked a step behind. Well, I was the one with all, all the glory. While you were the one with all the strength. A beautiful face without a name. A beautiful face to hide the pain. Did I ever tell you you're my hero? You're everything I wish I could be. And I can fly higher than an eagle. For you are the wind beneath my wings. It might have appeared to go unnoticed but I've got it all here in my heart I want you to know I know the truth that I would be nothing without you did I ever tell You're everything I wish I could be. And I can fly higher than an eagle. For you are the wind beneath 
Yo no. 